Carl Sfraga. I'm a PhD analytical chemist, and I work here at PNL with an area called chemical forensics, where the whole idea is to have a capability to find the perpetrators of a chemical attack on our nation, our allies. A chemical threat agent will look a lot like the water that I have here in this vial. Uh, sarin, for instance, is a chemical warfare agent that looks a lot like what the water I have here. And there's enough water, or in this case, if we were to simulate sarin, to kill people in a subway car. And so one of the things that we're concerned about or the law enforcement is, is agents like sarin that are used in closed environments such as subway cars. Another uh, chemical threat agent that has been used in the past are toxic industrial chemicals such as the cyanide sample. And actually this is a salt sample, but it simulates sodium cyanide which looks just like it. it's uh, white, granular, uh, tasteless uh, if you're talking about cyanides. And these have been used in the past for um, mass murders. Forensic capability for law enforcement to determine how these were made or where they came from so that we can tie uh, a crime scene where these were used to a particular perpetrator um, so that eventually we can not only find them but also prosecute them in court. So in terms of chemical forensics, the uh, most work that we've done, that we've been most successful is in the area called purity profiling. So all chemicals, even if they're 99% pure, will all have impurities in them. And we've come up with the tools and the capabilities in order to exploit those impurities and to use those impurities as a, as a, as a tracker or as a tracer to then um, attribute to figure out where that chemical originally came from. For example, we've been able to show that when you make sarin, which was a nerve agent used in the Tokyo subway attacks, uh, we can tie it back to the starting ingredients where it came from, the specific manufacturer's specific lot. In terms of cyanides, which are also poisons that have been used in the past, um, we've been able to tie back to their country of origin and based on the impurities that we've, we've been um, finding at low levels in these different types of what we call chemical threat agents. So that's what we're doing here is, is, is impurity profiling. Uh, we're also working with um, uh, other colleagues here at PNNL that use other analytical techniques that uh, together provide greater confidence with matches that we make from a crime scene, let's say, to a particular suspect or a particular region in the world. I think the work that we're doing in chemical forensics is important to America because it makes America safer um, by two, two ways. Uh, one way is as a deterrent. Uh, we publish our work and so it also gets some media attention. So potential terrorists out there um, will see that we have a capability or developing a capability to, to track them down if, if they were to use uh, a chemical threat agent, a toxic chemical on, on, our, on our nation, on our people. So that's definitely the, uh, one of the benefits. The other is to prevent future attacks. Um, if there is an attack or a potential attack and we stop it before it happens, if we can analyze the, uh, the material, the toxic agent, and find out where the ingredients came from, we can then go back to the sources and then try to stop future attacks with that information. So right now, the work that we're doing in chemical forensics is really at the proof of concept stage. It's something we've only started a few years ago. And now we're getting um, more involved where our goal is to eventually get to a point where we're operational, something that could be used by, by law enforcement to, uh, to find perpetrators of, of chemical attacks. I'm Carl Sfraga. I'm a PhD analytical chemist. And what I want to do is catch bad guys.